There are very many things you can do this way. Well, can you do everything without assignment? Should everybody go over to purely functional languages? Well, you don't know. But there seem to be places where purely functional programming breaks down. Where it starts hurting is when you have things like this, but you also mix it up with the other things that we had to worry about, which are objects and sharing, and two independent ag agents being the same. So one very typical one is, suppose you want to extend this bank account. So here's a bank account. It's going to take in a, right, bank accounts take in a stream of transaction requests and put out streams of, say, balances or responses to that. But suppose you want to model the fact that this is a joint bank account between two, two independent people. Right. So suppose, uh, I don't know, suppose there are two people, say Bill and Dave, who have a joint bank account. How would you model this? Well, you might, Bill puts out a stream of transaction requests, and Dave puts out a stream of transaction requests, and somehow they have to merge into this bank account. So what you might do is write a little stream processing thing called merge. which sort of takes these, merges them together, produces a single stream for the bank account. Now they're both talking to the same bank account. That's all great, but how do you write merge? See, what, what's this procedure merge? You want to do something that's reasonable. Uh, your first guess might be to say, well, we'll take alternate requests from Bill and Dave. See, but what happens if uh, you know, suddenly in the middle of this thing, Dave goes away on vacation for two years? Right, then Bill sort of is stuck. So what you want to do is, well, it's hard to describe. What you want to do is what people call fair merge. And the idea of fair merge is it sort of should do them alternately, but if there's nothing waiting here, it should take one twice. Notice I can't even say that without talking about time. So one of the other active research areas in functional languages is inventing little things like fair merge and maybe some others which will which will take the places where I used to need side effects and objects and sort of sort of hide them away in some very well defined modules of the system so that all the problems of of assignment don't sort of leak out all over the system but are, are captured in some fairly well understood things. Okay. More generally, I think what you're seeing is that we're running across a ver what I think is a very basic problem in computer science, which is how to, how to define languages that somehow can talk about delayed evaluation, but also be able to reflect this view that there are objects in the world. How do we, how do we somehow get both? And I think that's a very hard problem. And it may be that it's a very hard problem that has almost nothing to do with computer science, that it really is a problem having to do with two very incompatible ways of looking at the world. Questions? You mentioned earlier that um, once you introduce assignment, the general rule for for uh, using the substitution model is you can't. Unless you're very careful, you can't. Right. Is there a set of techniques or a set of um, guidelines for localizing the effects of assignment so that the very careful becomes defined? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, let me think. Well, certainly, there was an assignment inside MemoProc. But that was sort of hidden away. It ended up not making any difference. Part of the reason for that is once, once this thing triggered that it had run and gotten an answer, that answer will never change. So that was sort of a one-time assignment. So one very general thing you can do is if you only do what's called one-time assignment, you never change anything, then you can do better. One of the problems in this merge thing, people have, let's see if this is right. I think it's true that with fair merge, with just fair merge, you can begin effectively simulating assignment in the rest of the language. 
it seems like anything you do to go outside, I don't, I'm not quite sure that's true for fair merge, but it's true of, of a little bit more general things that people have been doing. So it might be that any little bit you put in, suddenly, if they allow you to build arbitrary stuff, it's almost as bad as having assignment altogether. But uh, that's, a, that's an area that people are thinking about now. I guess I don't see the problem here with merge if, if uh, you know, in a sense, if, if I call Bill, if Bill's a procedure, then Bill is going to increment the bank account and, or, or build the list. It's going to put in the next element. If I call Dave twice in a row, that will do that. I'm not sure where fair merge has to be involved. The problem is, imagine these really as people. See, here I have a user who's sitting, interacting with this bank account. Put in a request, get an answer. Put in a request, get an answer. But if the only way I can process requests is to alternate them from two people. Why don't you alternate them? Why don't I? Because yeah. this guy why might do you? Think of them as real people. Right? This guy might go away for a year. And you're, right. so what and you're sitting here at the bank account window. And you can't put in two requests because it's waiting for this guy. Why does it have to be waiting for one? Because it's trying to compute a function. I have to define a function. Another way to say that is the answer to what comes out of this merge box is not a function of what goes in. Because, see, what, the, what would the function be? Suppose he puts in 1, 1, 1, 1, and he puts in 2, 2, 2, 2. What's the answer supposed to be? It, it's not good enough to say it's 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. I understand, but, but right? when Bill puts in 1, 1 goes in. When Dave puts in 2 twice, 2 goes in twice. When Bill puts in, right. why, why can't it be hooked to the time of the input, the actual procedural? Because I don't have time. See, all I can say is I'm going to all, I want to define a function. I don't have time. Right? There's no concept if it's going to alternate, except if nobody's there, it's going to wait a while for him. Right? It's just going to say, I have the stream of requests, the, the timeless infinite streams of all the requests that Dave would have made. Right? And the timeless infinite stream of all the requests Bill would have made, and I want to operate on them. See, that's how this bank account is working. And the problem is that these poor people who are sitting at the bank account windows have the un have the misfortune to exist in time. Right? They don't see their infinite stream of, of all the requests they would have ever made. They're waiting now and they want an answer. Right? So if you, I mean, if you're sitting there, you know, if this is the the, sc the screen operation on some time sharing system, and it's working functionally, you want an answer then when you type the character. You don't want it to have to wait for everybody in the whole system to have typed one character before it can get around to service you. So that's the problem. <laughs>